G'day guys, welcome back to Off-Road Crusader and today we are doing an awesome install of a Red Arc uh, 2000 watt inverter. I've been super keen to get one of these into my setup for ages um, and um, yeah, I've finally bought one and um, yeah, we're gonna put it in there because I'd really like to run induction cooking. I'd like to at least try it and see what the hype is and um, see if it's something that's suitable for our setup. So that's what we're gonna do. I've chosen the 2000 watt inverter because it gives me a quite a broad range of different appliances I can run. Um, some appliances sit between that 1500 and sort of 2000 watt range and um, obviously this is more than capable of doing it. It does also have a peak um, like surge power that it can run to. So for whatever reason you have like startup power or you need to sort of overload it for a short period of time, it can run up to 3500 watts for a short period of time, um, which I doubt I'm ever gonna need, but it's nice to have that capacity. So we're gonna in, uh, mount this into the car where it's nice and accessible. It's a lovely Red Arc product, so we may as well make it look good. Um, and for that, we've got some pretty beefy cables. They are massive. They are designed for more load than what this is gonna draw. Um, I've also got a fuse holder as well. So this is a Busman Mega Fuse holder. They are pretty chunky. Uh, they've got eight mil bolts to hold it all in place. Nice rubber cover to go over the top as well. I've got some 250 amp mega fuses. So these are like MIDI fuses, only mega. Um, and this is the size which is recommended for this inverter. So check with the manufacturer to see what fuse size they recommend. Red Arc recommended 250 amp uh, fuse for this particular inverter. So that's what we're gonna run. And I've got a spare just in case. Um, I've had all of these cables uh, sort of pre-lengthened. Um, so I've sort of mocked up ex sort of where I want it, figured out my lengths, added 10% and then had some proper lugs and everything put on it because I don't have the proper crimping tool. Yeah, I could probably make it work with a vise and a, probably a, put a nut in there somehow, but I'd rather do it properly. Once I've sort of got everything laid out, I've then also got some nice heat shrink to put over the ends, make it look a bit more professional. That way I can see what's positive and what's negative. And the end goal is to have one of these. So this is a twin outlet GPO, uh, 240 volt outlet. I wanna run this on the drawers somewhere so I can just plug stuff in. Um, that's the end goal. We're gonna cross that bridge when we get to it, but just so you know, that's where we're heading. So I really am looking forward to putting this onto the 200. I've got a good spot in mind on the K-On pet barrier where I'd like to mount it. So we're gonna pull that off the car and basically mount that on there and um, then do our wiring. So come along for the ride, let's do it. Oh, before I forget, I've got mugs. Um, these will be available eventually on the Offroad Crusader uh, merch page. For now, I've got a few of these available. They're the cool type, the magic ones, which are all black. Then you add your hot water and then they change color, which is kind of cool. You got some wood, wow. So if you're after one of these mugs, which Coda thinks is pretty cool, um, send me a message on Instagram and we will figure something out for you. So let's jump into the install. Are you gonna help? Yeah. Yeah, okay, well, that's, <laughs> that's well-intentioned. Uh, let's jump into it and go. So here it is, the K-On pet barrier is out of the car. Uh, this is basically where I want to mount it. Um, you can see on the pet barrier itself, it's got a bunch of sort of little holes that you can use. And unfortunately, they don't all line up um, with the Red Arc uh, inverter. So I have the option of either modifying the inverter mounting hole, so I can just drill an extra hole next to it, or drilling into the pet barrier itself. So um, I think either way is really going to be a decent way to do it. So I might just, like there, obviously I can't uh, drill into the pet barrier because it's not there, but I could drill next to it. Um, there, it's sort of, you know, it's right over the um, the upright in the pet barrier, so I can use that, so I may as well do that. And that one lines up quite nicely, so we're just going to reuse that. So that's basically where it's going to sit. Um, obviously the headrest, you can see the headrest bracket there is going to sit all behind it. That's all still usable and accessible. And then it will just be running my wiring um, down through the pet barrier but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it and also that means that the outlet is nice and easy to get to and I can either run it back to the drawers or through the pet barrier towards the front of the car for whatever reason I need to so it gives me lots of options let's get into uh, mounting this thing So here's where we're at, uh, the inverter's all mounted to the pet barrier, I'm pretty happy with how that's come out. I've used some nylock nuts to make sure the door doesn't come loose. Um, and also I've managed to find these little black caps that fit really nicely over the back of the uh, bolts. 
um, and just making sure there's no no sharp edges. And I think it just really neatens it all off as well. So I've had them sitting in the shed for a long time and uh, thought I'd always use them but never had. And this was the perfect opportunity to use them. So really glad I kept them around. Um, now I'm just going to hoard everything that comes through my shed because of uh, one good experience. Anyway, but we're going to move forward with mounting this all up and getting towards the wiring. Um, as with most projects, I prefer to, like in this instance, attach the ends of the leads onto here. They are accessible in the car, um, but obviously not as accessible as here. I'm able to work much easier on the bench, so I may as well do what I can now. Um, so I'm going to attach the positive and negative leads to the inverter. Um, these are the things here, we'll just put them in some split tubing, a um, bit of heat shrink over the end to make them look pretty. They give you these nice little covers which uh, go over the wire and uh, basically slot onto the top of the terminal. Um, and protects it all from shorting out and makes it look really neat as well So I'm super keen to see how all that looks But obviously I'd rather do that here on the table where I've got access to that sort of stuff I'm going to attach all my wiring Red Arc also supply a chassis ground terminal on this as well uh, A big draw card for the Red Arc inverters is they are double insulated or double grounded um, Meaning that it's just sort of an extra layer of protection against shorting out um, Look 240 volt systems are not my forte I, re I refer to the experts and in this instance, it's Red Arc who make this thing, and they say doing this will make this a safer unit. So I'm definitely going to go ahead with that. This only requires a 8mm cable to it, uh, which I've just had some in the shed. Put some conduit over it, and away I go. I've got a length of that, uh, which I'll put to a ground point inside the back of the car where the drawers are. Um, I've just left all the other ends unterminated, because that way I can sort of sort it out inside the car. So the lengths are going to be what I need. Um, so my positive is going to go on there, negative on that side. Uh, once it's all together, maybe I can look at even uh, mounting all these cables onto the actual pet barrier. Um, and then we'll look at putting it in the car. So let's go forward. Right, so here's where we're at. Um, lights on because it's dark. Um, inverter, looking all specky and nice up there. All my wiring's run down. Down that way and to wherever it needs to go. Um, positive wire runs through the uh, 250 watt, uh, sorry, 250 amp mega fuse, which I've mounted there right next to the battery so it's all nice and short runs of cable. Um, and the negative run, uh, where can you see it? You can sort of see that little cable poking out um, and I've made a little step up um, bracket which is basically just a little Z shape of bit of steel um, because there's just not enough room. Uh, the terminal, the stud on the Manager 30 uh, shunt is larger than the lugs that I've got so it means either I have to drill them out which is never a good idea or re-terminate them which I don't have new lugs so this is the next best step. Um, also, it makes it a little bit more accessible as well. So, if I need to, for whatever reason, disconnect that cable, I can at any moment. Um, this connection, so that goes to the chassis uh, ground side of the shunt, which is the correct way to run it so that you can see the load uh, coming off of the uh, Manager 30 side of things. So, all the Red Vision screen will look all nice. So, that's all done. Um, the other negative that's run from that, which is a small one, um, I've run off to another negative that I've got going to the body. And um, yeah, we're ready to try it out and see how it all goes. So once you go through and configure the uh, Red Vision system to include the inverter, it's just under your uh, like outputs, essentially. It's not under anything else. You just go to outputs, like where all of your Outputs 1 through to 10 are. Uh, scroll to the bottom, it's the one just after output number 10. Um, inverter, make sure you enable the channel um, and then you can choose like a icon and how else you want to set it up. Um, so I've set it up, I've got it as one of my soft keys on here. Um, I've just grabbed the first 
240 volt accessory I can find, which is just a Ryobi battery charger. The inverter's got a three-way switch on it for on, off, and then remote, uh, I suppose, turning on. Uh, there's a better way to say it. Um, but that allows it to be turned on and off remotely through either the um, RS switch, which you can buy through Red Arc, or the Red Vision system. So I've set that up. So I've turned it over to remote start. So I should press this button and I should see lights come on on that Ryobi thing. Let's give it a go. Hey, there it goes. Took a little bit, what we got there? So that's all on. Um, I can also see on my Red Vision screen um, that there it is drawing uh, amps, which is nice to see. Oh, what's it sitting at? Uh, about seven amps it's drawing um, to charge that little battery, which is good. I was running it through a little 400 watt inverter before and really only running about 300 watts and it was drawing about four amps. So um, you can see how having that higher flow of power works much better for your charges. So I'm absolutely stoked the inverter is working. Um, it's working all through the system there. And um, yeah, I can't wait to throw some heavy stuff at it and see what it does. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this has helped you to uh, either inspire you or, or help you through your inverter install into your setup. Um, because I think they're the way of the future. I think having a 240 volt um, inverter and having access to 240 volt really opens up a lot of avenues for your accessories and for camping. I'm ready to go camping now, so sweet. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. We will catch you guys in the next episode of Off-Road Crusader. Uh, if you wanna support the channel, head over to the merch store. There's some shirts for sale. Uh, we've got stickers and patches as well. Um, or if you wanna jump on Patreon and get early access and everything to videos, there's also a link in the description for that as well. So um, yeah, we'll catch you next time on Off-Road Crusader. Cheers.